Hello Kettle and Pentaho fans, today I want to talk a bit more about the, the test-driven development plugin or also called the uh, uh, dataset plugin and uh, I wanted to highlight the three main uh, use cases that we have for them for the plugin and the first one is ease of use uh, for programming new transformations uh, this use case revolves around the difficulty of designing Kettle transformations that are uh, not receiving any input or where the input is hard to get at for example if it's behind a firewall or if the data is slow to retrieve like a long-running query uh, that sort of thing or in the case where the uh, the source data that you that you need doesn't exist yet in that case uh, what we did uh, as, as for example in this mapping that you see uh, we can provide input from uh, from a data set. Now a data set is uh, simply a um, a set of rows that we store into a database uh, into what we call a data set group. In this case it's stored in it into a relational database uh, into a MySQL database uh, and um, so we can provide this transformation with a set of rows uh, from uh, that table. Uh, as you can see, we have an ID, first name, last name, and a name field. Um, as you can guess, we were going to test the uh, concatenation of name and last name in this transformation, this highly simplified transformation, and see if it's correctly executed. Um, so, what we can do is simply click right on this transformation and say that we want to use this data set as an input. Now we can supply the field mapping between the uh, rows from the data set, fields from the data set, and the ones that are output by the uh, table, uh, by the uh, step. So while that is done, we can also supply a sort order so to make sure that uh, we, the step receives the, the rows in a certain order. Uh, we're going to sort by ID. And so what we get now is this, that this transformation uh, has a new annotation, uh, some graphical uh, feedback. And um, so, yeah, th this, this can be used. What we actually want to do um, is actually create like a new, what we call test case. Um, so um, we're developing a transformation. So we, we call this developing. And now what, what we can see is that we can uh, create different test cases for this uh, scenario with, with perhaps multiple input data sets. And um, so now we, we can actually persist this as well in this test case. So uh, this is the better way of doing it. There we go. And uh, so once this is saved, we can uh, actually um, we can switch between various test cases. So uh, suppose that we uh, go back to developing, it's remembered. Um, so what we can do now is actually say, okay, uh, let's do a quick preview of the output. And it actually looks good, right? Uh, so the concatenation is done correctly. Uh, to test whether or not things are done correctly, we can specify a golden data set and validate uh, name, first name, uh, last name, and name against the data set and again sort of at the same order. Um, so if we run this now, uh, we will see in the logging that actually we done uh, a, um, a test, uh, we call a unit test. Test passed successfully against uh, golden data, that's what it says. Okay. Um, if we're, you know, if we're not happy with the fact that there are other steps in the transformation that we're perhaps using for testing, uh, you can actually disable those. Uh, in this case, uh, we, we can enable some tweaks, and this is uh, remove the step from the unit test. And here we don't want to remove it, but we want to bypass it. And uh, the bypass means that we will replace this step with a dummy step. Incidentally, uh, when we run that, uh, when we run table inputs and table outputs, um, we will replace uh, table input or any step uh, 
where we supply input with it with an injector step which is a is a placeholder where we can uh, programmatically inject rows into and we will uh, replace all the step where we're, steps where we're testing uh, with um, with a dummy because we can just collect the rows from from the dummy so that means that if you uh, have a table output step at the end it will not execute anything at runtime if you do have uh, databases to connect to and if you do want to uh, store something uh, we do supply the option of replacing uh, the database that you're using with a test database so uh, while the uh, test transformation is uh, is running well before that, that happens actually we will replace all sorts of metadata elements like steps but also the uh, database connection information so that makes it safe for you to write and read from another database with uh, maybe different uh, test material in it uh, so this uh, actually speeds up, uh, you know, development tremendously. Um, and this also brings me over to the second use case, which is uh, test-driven development. Uh, because uh, suppose that you, you can actually start from this case where you have test data, and now you're asking a developer to actually implement the concatenation. Um, so... If you have that concatenation, uh, the test either works or it doesn't. So for the project manager or for the for the for your colleagues that need to verify that your work was done correctly, it's easy to verify this. I suppose that somebody makes a mistake somewhere, like puts an extra space in here, and, and runs this. Uh, you will actually get like a pop-up dialog saying, "Hey, there's a validation error." Right? Mickey double space mouse that does not correspond to the value Mickey space mouse. And you will also see this in the logging as an error. Uh, so this makes it possible for project managers or for requirements to be drafted based solely on the input data and the expected output data. Uh, sometimes, you know, with uh, uh, with dirty data, with, with special uh, uh, string manipulations, that can be very interesting. Uh, the third um, and important use case I want to talk about is actually uh, unit test as a protection of your investment. So if you're not really developing something, but if you want really have like a unit test uh, uh, defined, uh, you can actually uh, specify this to be like an official unit test. It's not just some fiddling around, but it's actually a unit test. Uh, and so what we can do at that point is um, is actually uh, execute all the unit tests, right? Uh, let me see where I stored this one. Uh, I forgot it. Let, let's create a new one. Let's create a new transformation that executes all the unit tests. Um, so in this case, we, we say, uh, well, we, we're going to execute all the test cases uh, of type unit test. And uh, what you will see is that, um, so we'll, I think I have one or two defined. Let's call this uh, unit test run all. If you execute this one, uh, it will actually output the information. So we have a two uh, failing unit tests, which is probably like the same thing. Uh, now we go back to the transformation. We fix uh, the double space error. Save it. Run this one again. And what we'll see is that we have one pass test and one failed by intention. And so the idea is then that uh, you can execute this transformation on a nightly basis on a on a regular schedule or have it executed through Jenkins. And uh, you, you can use this to protect your investment because if you have a lot of transformations and a lot of uh, investment in time material of, uh, of your ETL, it makes sense to uh, to protect at least uh, the more, more complex uh, pieces of work. Those transformations that are prone to error, maybe because somebody uh, fixed something with all good intentions, but... Uh, we need, you need to protect the old rules that are that are uh, that are specified. 
and in the unit test you can give descriptions and you can you can uh, validate that uh, that certain things are, are done properly uh, with respect to the, the old requirements well that's basically what I wanted to show you today uh, please don't forget to give feedback to uh, pass along any kind of suggestions to make this more user-friendly uh, I'm aware that this is uh, still labs work but uh, I think it's 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 coming to the point where it's slowly getting more useful. So let me know what kind of uh, improvements that you want to see, what kind of uh, features you want to see added or made better. And if, if there are things that don't work, let me know. Thank you very much. And goodbye.